Welcome guys, it's Matsmus here with you today, thank you for joining me on this video. So today we are talking about some more artillery pieces, and in this particular case a self-propelled gun that is on wheels, and it is a behemoth. Now just before I go into this video, I'd like to remind you guys that you are able to be notified of any new videos I do bring out by just hitting the little tiny bell beside the subscribe button on my channel. If you'd like to be notified about any other military videos that are coming out in the near future, or even if you just want to check out some of my video gameplay of some video games I've been playing lately, please feel free to hit that little bell and you'll be informed of my channel whenever I bring out a new video. If you don't and you're sick to death of seeing my videos, I totally understand, uh, but uh, if you do have the interest of keeping up to date with what's going on in my channel, please feel free to hit that little bell and it will keep you up to date and uh, notified when I bring out some new videos. So today we are talking about the Dana 8x8 self-propelled gun and one hell of a gun this is. This is a heavy beast guys. Um, so being it's a self-propelled gun, most of the time you presume that I would do reviews on it being in tracks. Well, this is the first artillery piece that I'm reviewing that is actually a wheeled vehicle. Now, you know me, guys. I love my track vehicles. I love my tanks. But this is highly impressive. And honestly, sad to say, I think it's going to be the future of self-propelled guns and artillery systems for the most part in the future. I think militaries around the world are starting to step away from these heavy, cumbersome tracked vehicles that can go all over the place off-road in place of a vehicle that can get somewhere extremely quickly with a large crew and heavy armaments and be able to be resupplied quite quickly by a logistical MSR, say a main road and such, and actually shoot and scoot on the battlefield instead of just going across on rough cross country and finding horrible dirty tracks to go down. These vehicles are so quick at deploying and so quick at getting across the battlefield, it seems more likely that militaries want to focus on this quick reaction artillery pieces that can be wheeled and potentially a lot cheaper than trying to build tracked vehicles. You've got to think the logistical demand on an armored fighting vehicle being in tracks is very high. And it's kind of interesting to see these gun pieces on these huge wheel-based vehicles. I mean, they just look deadly. Um, and this vehicle clearly has a lot of potential. So let's go over its history and a little bit of its technical specifications. And finally, we'll go over my own personal opinion on this vehicle. So, the Dana saw its origins in Czechoslovakian military requirement of the 1970s for an indigenous self-propelled gun system capable of indirect fire support. Design work began in the early to mid 1970s and completed in 1976 by Constructor Trexin, utilizing the excellent 8x8 wheeled chassis of the Tatra T815 series truck, as opposed to the traditional conventional track wheeled arrangement. The vehicle also proposed an internal auto loading mechanism, another departure from the manual loading systems of the day. The selection of an existing wheeled system not only provided the design with a proven chassis, but wheeled systems were generally cheaper to mass produce than their track counterparts, which generally required drive sockets, idlers, track links, return walls, and all tied into a massive power plant. The 152mm SPGH Dana was eventually accepted and adopted into the Czechoslovakian army in 1981, and mass production was handled by ZTS Dubnika Nadvaham. I'm going to try my best, guys, but I struggle with some of these, you know, really tough words. An impressive 755 of these vehicles have been produced to date. The Dana's truck origins can clearly be seen in her outward design, characterized by her huge eight road wheels. These are set as pairs with four road wheels to each hull side. The forward hull is a crew cab housing the driver, commander, and steering system, and is fixed in place upon the chassis. Powered steering is delivered to the front four tyres. The cab windows can be covered over a hinged armoured panel, which is needed to suit the current battlefield environment as required. The main gun is fitted traversing with the mount amidship and sports noticeably angled facings. The main gun protrudes from this insulation and sits out over the crew cab. The Dana is operated by a standard crew of five personnel. A newer variant reduces this to four and includes a gunner, loader operator and ammunition handler in the turret. The Dana, the original, is armed with a powerful 152mm howitzer gun system that sports an elevation arc of plus 70 degrees to minus 4 degrees. Traverse is plus or minus 45 degrees, therefore it cannot be fired in a 360 configuration. Standard range with conventional projectiles is approximately 18km. 
The gun is cleared to fire a variety of projectiles and warhead types and including the high explosive and high explosive anti-tank warhead type. There are also long range projectiles reaching up to around 20 kilometers. The Dana turret is reloaded via an integrated crane system. Three hydraulically powered stabilizers used to combat the violent recoil of the 152mm main gun are lowered to the ground before the firing process is commenced. Secondary armament includes a 12.7mm DSKM heavy machine gun meant for anti-aircraft defense and potentially personnel attack. The Dana vehicle fields a running length of 34.4 feet with a width of 9 feet and a height of 8.5 feet. She weighs an approximate 50,700 pounds and is powered by a single V12 Tatra T930-34 series air-cooled diesel engine delivering approximately 345 horsepower. This supplies the vehicle with a maximum road speed of 50 miles per hour with an operational range equal to 373 miles. The Dana can ford through 4.6 feet of water and climb 5 foot obstacles while traversing trench type openings of 4.6 feet. Her wheels feature centralized pressure regulation systems to allow the driver to set individual tire pressures on the fly based on the terrain and thus improving off-road mobility. Let's be honest here though guys, this vehicle is mainly designed for on-road capabilities to be able to deliver this weapon system as quickly as it can to an area of the battlefield using MSRs and main roads to get it there. The Dana has since been branched out into several notable variants. The 152mm SHKH on Deva was a Dana development project running through the late 1980s that sought to upgrade various features of the base system. A longer main gun barrel was installed as was a redesigned double baffled muzzle brake and the loading mechanics were addressed for efficiency. However, with the Velvet Revolution of 1989 that saw the end of the communist regime in Czechoslovakia, the Ondava conversion ended. Regardless, the initiatives begun in the Ondava project were used in the upcoming Zuzana program. The 155mm Zuzana bore some of the revisions of the preceding Ondava program. The chief change to the Dana family line was the institution of the more powerful 155mm main gun that was chambered to fire a variety of NATO standard projectiles. The Slovak army took deliveries of these modified Danas in 1998. The 155mm Himalaya was another progressive development of the Dana system. The chief differentiating feature of this variant was the tracked wheel arrangement, a vast departure from the eight-wheeled arrangement from designs prior. The 155mm main gun system of the Suzana variant was kept intact and the chassis of the Soviet Russian T-72 main battle tank was used to mount the main gun too. The 152mm Modan is a modernized version of the Dana, still retaining the original 152mm main gun caliber and the 8 wheeled road system. This version features a new digital fire control system that promotes increased ranges and improved accuracy. Operators of the Dana have included the former Czechoslovakia and Soviet former Union and at the height of her use each of these nations fielded 408 and 108 examples respectively. With the dissolving of both countries these systems were either set in storage or passed on to the successor armies that followed. The Czech Republic still maintains some 160 Dana examples of her original 273 strong stable. Slovakia is thought to have about 135 examples on hand. Libya is a rare African operator of the Dana and has purchased at least 120 examples. Poland is the next largest operator of the Dana system at 110 examples and Georgia retains nearly 50 units of her own, some having seen action in the 2008 South Ossetia War. The Polish army has used their Danas as part of their presence in NATO's Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. Incidentally, the designation Dana stems from the words, and let me try and do this as best as I can, do not get triggered, Delo Automobilini Nabajin Automiki, which itself translated into self-propelled auto-loading gun. The Dana is also known under its technical designation of SHKH-77, thus covering the Sabiena, Kanahova, Hofenika, the Zor, 77. Hopefully I said that right. The crew of the Dana consists of the driver who operates the hydraulic stabilizers, the commander sitting in the front cabin who authorizes the fire missions, the gunner who aims and fires the open fire order on the gun, and the loader operator who selects the appropriate amount of powder charges. 
on the left side of the turret. The ammo handler sets the shell's primers on the right hand side of the turret. Well guys, what do I think of this vehicle? Well first and foremost, this is a battle proven vehicle. It has fought in a couple of conflicts, so it's safe to say this thing has done its time in serving in an actual combat environment and has actually done what it's been asked to do. It seems that a lot of vehicles that are coming out, especially in the wheelbase platforms nowadays, have never actually seen any combat, which means it's difficult to put a real judgement on them if you don't know their capabilities. For this particular vehicle, it's quite easy to say that being used in Afghanistan and other potential conflicts around the world that have happened in the past, we know this vehicle has been quite well received. It's interesting to see even the old Soviet era vehicles for artillery being upgraded to the NATO standard of 155mm guns. I'm sure that was to the uh, argument of certain military commanders that weren't too impressed having to do so, but it does make complete logical sense, especially if you're a NATO country that wants to be involved using artillery pieces, it would make complete sense to be able to standardize your barrel to be able to engage targets using the same ammunition as multiple other SPGs out there in the NATO forces. I must admit guys, seeing this vehicle putting rounds down range brings kind of a tear to my eye, because Actually seeing these guns fire in a combat environment is proving to me that these vehicles are clearly doing their job correctly. Um, there's no requirement for a, you know, a vehicle, especially in such that we're looking at right now in Afghanistan, to be able to have tracks. Because it's just not necessary, they're not going off train, they're holding up in a FOB or some sort of patrol base where they can just put rounds down range and get out of there. Um, I know for experience driving track vehicles in desert environments can be very, very tedious on engines and certain components and such, and a wheeled vehicle really does suit it a lot better, being able to traverse across large, large areas of land, going on patrols and such, it's nice, instead of having to worry about your track maintenance and all that sort of stuff, and that's why this vehicle I think shines, is it's perfect for this kind of environment, being able to drive along in an MSR convoy, park up in an FOB, and put rounds down range. And also with that being said, supply vehicles such as trucks and things can follow this thing quite easily behind and resupply it as much as possible. Where it comes to armoured fighting vehicles with tracks, it gets a little bit more risky and tricky trying to supply logistically these vehicles with the heavy 155mm shells or 152mm shells. The automatic loader is pretty much a no-brainer. It's obvious that these vehicles are going to start relating to auto-loading systems, especially with a big heavy 155mm shell. And uh, it's nice to see that it is capable of firing at some really good elevations. Difficult is it can't be able to fire beyond 45 degrees left and right of arc, but that really isn't a major concern. The vehicle is quite easily steerable into those positions. Unfortunately, unlike a track vehicle, it cannot neutral turn, so it does have to do a bit of a three-point turn, so to speak. Uh, but that's not really a major concern and something that is quite easily adjusted by just putting in reverse and adjusting. Um, but something to think about, you know, I mean, we're talking about some vehicles that are SPGs that can rotate that turret nice and easily to all over the place to be able to engage. That's a little bit of a weakness on this part for the vehicle, but nothing major. One thing that did surprise me with this vehicle was its rather small engine, to be honest. I mean, developing around 345 horsepower. You gotta look at the size of this damn thing. 345 horsepower for a diesel engine? V12? That's not much, guys. It's kind of interesting. Um, but clearly, it seems to do very, very well for itself. I mean, it goes all over the place. It's able to traverse and move across land very, very easily. Um, and obviously it's going to power down the road. I was just kind of surprised that such a big vehicle like this had such a small power plant, which in itself is going to give you some pretty good fuel economy, I guess. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure how fuel economy works for a gigantic 50,000 pound artillery system. But it was just shocking to me. Maybe a future upgrade could potentially be to give it a bit bigger of an engine, a bit more powerful of an engine. Who, who knows? Um, another key feature that I really like to this vehicle is the on-the-fly tire pressure regulation. Uh, adjustment which is great because if you go on off-road you don't want nice hard tires you want soft spongy tires to be able to traverse across muddy terrain and such that's really really cool uh, and I think that's gonna be a standard for all wheel based vehicles from now on I'm not too sure if these wheels are run flats that's gonna be interesting to see uh, I couldn't find any information on them being run flats so presumably they are not so that could be a concern um, and the turning circle on this is going to be reduced significantly with that nice front four wheelbase turn. So again, not a not a huge turning circle, which is great for if you're getting out of tight spots, say a wood line and such. One more thing that I really love about this vehicle is its nostalgic value. The vehicles were sadly going to be put into storage, not used anymore after the fall of different unions and different armed forces and such countries and whatever. 
I am really glad that they've been brought back into the world of the armed forces and being given a nice revamp and put back onto the combat line. I hate seeing vehicles that are very formidable and very capable being mothballed just because of some government institution failing to do whatever, blah blah blah, politics, I'm not going to talk about it, but it's just really nice to see this vehicle being able to continue on its future. Overall guys, I find this vehicle to be highly impressive. Yes, it doesn't have tracks, so that's a bitter dagger to my heart, however this wheeled vehicle is an impressive artillery piece and is able to put rounds down range effectively and within the protection for its crew as well. I really am liking this vehicle guys and I hope you do too. I would love it if you could leave me a comment and some sort of uh, explanation as to why you dislike or like it. Please feel free to leave a like, I would love it if you let me some feedback. Once again guys, please hit that notification bell if you do want to see any more future videos for my channel, whether it be military or gaming. And if you are new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe. I'm also on Facebook guys and uh, I do have a Patreon account so if you do wish to donate or follow through that. But for now, I'm going to let you guys go and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me, all the best and bye bye.